Let's do not lies. Fools not delicious. Don't, don't, don't. Welcome to the. I'm speaking softly because I'm in the business lounge, lad. It's quiet in here. There's not many people here. Well, there's a few people here, but they're like over there and they're being quiet and I'm being quiet and I'm progressively talking louder because I'm feeling cozy. I'm in the little cinema area. I'm in the Luftwaffe Airport, lad. <laughs> Frankfurt International Business Lounge. The Luftwaffe. Luftwaffe Heisen Airport, lad. You know what we'll do? Let's go suss out the planes. Why are you doing this? What's the time? I got here. I got off the plane from Belgrade. I'm going home, lads. Hey, I'm going home, lads. Let's oge. I got here at uh, 3.50. It's 4.43. My flight is at, we'll go check, 9 p.m. something. I've got another five hours, lads. <coughs> I've got another five hours. But... Hey, I feel like I'm here for all the rich people, mate. All the bougies, like when I fly business, like old Anyos is living up with the Buckingham Palaces of fucking Luftwaffe Airport, lad. <laughs> Luftwaffe Airport, that's its new name, lad. Tell a German that they'll cry, lad. Pumped a feedy before. You know how I'm on the old diet of roux? Well, not a diet, but just eating healthy. So I had a portion of rice. And then I got like two bowls of that, like a goulash thing. I just picked all the meat out. So I had about like a portion of rice and I swear like 400 grams of, <laughs> of meat pieces out of it. I tried to get as little of the sauce as possible. Salad bar over there. I've seen this before and I try to work out what this is, lad. I've seen a bloke standing in here talking on the phone. Look. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's a little, it's a little booth, lad. And if you eat spay in here, lad, it's like noise cancer. So you can have loud yarns, bro. That's so funny. I was thinking, why is he in a little phone box talking on his mobile? Do I hear the difference? There he's there, lad. He's still there, bro. The bloke. I just busted him, bro. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my flight. Nine forty-five. Walk time four minutes away, gate Z, Singapore. I said, we got legit five hours. <laughs> we'll cruise around the airport, I have a sus. <clears throat> but see this part of Luftwaffe International, um, these gates, this is like the international part, the, the busiest part is like Frankfurt is like a sort of hub for domestic European flights. Like so all the flights from Luft, Luft, Lufthansa, I ain't look, see, I'm not, they're, they're actually, their their airline's called Lufthansa, so Luftwaffe is appropriate, but um, it's, it goes through Frankfurt, but the other side, so I got off there because I come from Belgrade, and I had to like go out and go back through security to this international part, which is like way quieter, look at the whole day, from now, like, like I was saying, from now, oh, Washington, New York, Chicago, New York, Istanbul. No idea where Luanda is. Singapore, Hong Kong, Johannesburg, and Cape Town. The whole night, there's only 10 flights leaving this whole terminal. 
Bro, over there, there's like 10 flights a minute. Like, honestly, there's like a flight a minute. There's like 10 flights every 10 minutes. Oh, well. What was sus, eh? I've got that in my bag. That's in my bag. That's what I'm using right now. <laughs> this. This is what you're looking on. Same, same, mate. How much are they charging? 549 euros. That's the older one. <sighs> 549 euros. That looks like the handle that I'm talking about, cuz. That's the handle I'm talking about. The handle I've been saying the whole time. And it, on the bottom you can put a tripod. I bet you that's it. But anyway, we're going back home. I'll get it at home. I swear, I swear that's it, lad. Oh, look who it is. Old Gucciru. What are you doing, old Gucciru? Best friends with fucking... Best friends with fucking um, Balenciaga. Full sharing schemes, lad. Full sharing owners and... You know, fucking plots and that. You know, I'm on to you, mate. Hey, I burn Jagger or something. I'm not buying another one, lad. <laughs> Next time I'll burn your shop without buying that, lad. The old Che. Same as that brand, too. Ah, who gives a fuck, bro? Who cares? But it's coincidence. It's those, both of those brands are owned by the same people as Balenciaga. Why are you signing here, bro? Canada Goose. Oh, Adelaide. Cartier's. Chapards. How much are they selling their Cartier's for, lad? 1200, 1100. Ah, 33 grand, that one, lad. See that one there? At the back? Th 34 grand. 34 grand, lad. Euros. 50 grand, 55 grand, Aussie. They got bike names, yeah. I can pick up my tag Carrera too. I gave it into the tag Hewer store like a couple months ago to get it serviced because it started running fast. And I got a text message like three days ago that it's ready to pick up. I haven't worn that watch in like six months. It's a mad Carrera, mad tag Hewer. So now I've got the Breitling and the tag Hewer. I'll probably thrash the tag Hewer a lot more because it's just it's like one third the price. Yeah, but this side's way dead, eh? Look how dead it is, lad. My flight, so. Than me my phone don't make that noise my flight is 13 hours from here to Singapore then a three hour changeover and then it's eight hours from Singapore back to Sydney mission so how long is that all together eight hours to Sydney but it's three hours there that's 11 13 hours to get there that's 24 um, it's a total of six hours here, so that's 30. And it took two and a half hours to get here. 32 and a half hours, lad. 32 and a half hours to get from Serbia to Sydney.
but every Cartier looks the same. You know what I mean? Like every one of them look the same. Like when you go over, you look at like 30. The only the D one was see through, that's all. <laughs> True. Moncler. Look at that. All of those are supposed to be full. <laughs> Over there. Look at the Moncler shop. Moncler. I'm not saying that. But I gotta say, like an Aussie lad, Moncler had like full fucking Moncler beanie. Right, hello, hello, mate. They're gun beanies, eh? They actually look sick, these beanies, bro. Oh, they're sick beanies, lad. Who's gonna lie about that? Not me, no way, cuz. the spray that I bought. That's that spray that I bought in Amsterdam, mate, the day I bought that Gucci bag. It smells nice. I won't buy it again, though. It was Diaz, too. I don't remember the price. Someone will go back and correct me if I try to guess the price. I'm pretty sure it was like 130 euros or something, which is pretty dear. 200 bucks. It smells all right. It's a parfum at least, it's not a toilet. For the people that don't know the difference and they just ignore what it says, toilet is alcohol based, parfum is oil based. Toilets last about 60 minutes, parfums last most of the day. Never buy a toilet. That's why they're cheaper, that's why they're in chemist warehouse most of the time. Just buy oil based, even if it's a little dearer. Free sprays and you smell the whole day. The toilet, it costs like half the price, 600 sprays. You walk outside, you can't smell nothing. See, so these will all be toilets. Toilet. 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 Yeah, they're all toilets. That's why they're all like 20 bucks, 30 bucks. You know, like, uh, some people knew this for a long time and they just kept it dark. I don't know what the issue is. I feel like I'm not going to mount cars. I only learned this like a year ago. Someone goes, a perfume or toilet? And I said, in a store. And I said, I don't know, what are you talking about? And he full stood there and he, for one minute explained me the difference. He worked in like a perfume store. Ever since then, my life has changed for the better. Fragrances. There's boss over there. Oh, there's some clothes over there. Oh, the alcohols here. The alcohols. Shivers Regals. 114 euros. A snottle bish. What's that one? 250 euros. Royal salute. Twenty bucks for a bottle of Jimmy. I remember when I used to drink when I was a like a little kid, 13, 14, and I thought it was cool. I always used to drink wild turkey. I used to call it Uncle Turkey. <laughs> i tell you a funny yarn, bruh. In an undisclosed area where one of the boys lived, we used to, where we'd kick it at his house, right out of there, there was like um, a pub. It's in the itty says like areas where I'm from, obviously. So keep in mind, we're in the inner city. We're like five minutes away from the city. 
and like there'll be a there's like a pub <laughs> and we'd full ram raid the pub like we've just go steal a shit car and just smash it through the, the closed pub in the middle of the night two in the morning and just smash it through the windows and just to go in and just steal bottles to have a drink <laughs> that was like full like kids getting drunk like that was the thing go go who's got a ford laser go we'll get a laser boom smash it through lad three three of us just running and grab bottles so dumb for something so stupid you know what i mean and then later on we transferred those skills to make under base lad but back then uncle turkey That's a, that's, a, that's a cool bag, but I don't like the color, but I like the bag. You know what I mean? I like that bag. That's a mad bag, bro. If that was black, lad. How much is that? Eight hundred and nineteen euros. That's fucking deep for that for for Mont Blanc. Wake up to yourself, you fucking idiot! I'll, I'll fucking eight hundred and nineteen euros, thirteen hundred bucks. Wake up to yourself, brother. Mont Blanc. Why'd I pay for that if it said like four hundred bucks, five hundred bucks at the most? I think I'm a woman. Gonna pay thousands of dollars for a handbag. Mont Blanc, bro. Mont Blanc think they're full mad cunts, lad. They think they're their great, bro. These are a thousand euro pens. Come on, brother. 800, 840, 1050. Let's find the dearest one. 1350. 1550. Like two and a half grand Aussie. That's the dearest one, fifteen fifty. You know what that market is, bro? It's for like multi, multi millionaires, and it's a way to allow them to feel good. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's what it. That's all it can be. Like, what else can it be? Here's a three thousand dollar pen. It has a pattern on it. <laughs> That's all that it is. It's just a way for them to be. It's like little. It's it's you know it's um like just little displays of wealth. At, at that at that point, that's all it is. There's a point where it's like shit. There's decent quality. There's good quality, and then you pay for top quality, and then that like caps off at a pen at like a hundred bucks, and then anything from a hundred to ten thousand dollars is just like look at the name of my pen. I have six hundred million in my account. You know what I mean? Then again, a lot of things are like that. Watches are definitely like that. You know, like, I've seen a fucking, like, a full, like, we used to love watches back in Wollo, back in the day. And I've seen this full thing, um, this, like, I can't remember what it was from, or something from the internet. And it was like a full watch expert explaining that there's, like, levels of watches. But then it gets to a certain level that nothing at all changes and he said that that level can be reached with an average, like the mid-range Omega. He said if he's not into watches, a, a mid-range Omega is like a mad brand. What, like going off what I'm saying, it don't really get any better than that. It just becomes symbolic after that. So it's like there's definitely a different quality in watches, but the mid-range Omega, I don't know if it's the Seamaster or something perpetual, I don't remember what it was, but this is like a paper written from 20 years ago, but mind you, technology and watches don't change, it's not like eight years ago watches got good, it's the same watches, um, and when it, gets, when it gets to that point, anything beyond that point, you're literally just throwing your money away, if you look at it in terms of quality. Uh, and for perspective, that watch costs about, I'm just guessing, 
it's about the same price as a tag you are. It's like four grand, five grand at the most. Anything after that, it's like that. Even me, I wasted, what did I buy, 9,000 francs at 14, 15 grand on that Breitling the other month. It's a, there's, it's, it is what it is. It, that watch is like means something to me because of like the life I come from. Other than that, it wasn't a smart buy. It's rubbish because my Tag Heuer Carrera I got, it's like a f f six gram watch, five gram watch is exactly the same. And anyone with a 20 grand Rolex, uh, 30 grand Jaga Le Coulter or IWC, uh, uh, 80 grand Petit Philippe, it, they're all the fucking same. They just get to say, mine's called this, mine's called that. Facts, lad. I'm the bass, lad. Four, four oaky bungers, I'd like. Imagine if I had a heaps of those on the base, lad. I'll just be flash and that. Boom, lad. I'm just gonna ox stay up again and just go back full loaded, I'd like. Hey. <laughs> Big salts. I'll show you the price of bungers. I know some of you are rubbing your nipples right now. He's good cigarettes, yeah. Malbros. I don't think they have like wind fields and stuff. Hey, Malbros are pretty universal um, brand that you, of comparison. 106 euros, say 170 Australian for two cartons. Bro, what's going on here? Why are you being so enticing with your secret room? And your smoky smells, you're making me feel musky and masculine. I feel like this is the point where they're gonna come and kick me out. Look, he's gonna tell me he's gonna come and catch out. You want me to get out? Yes. Yeah, I didn't I tell you? <laughs> Without, you must ask my company, it's allowed to video. Oh, really? Really? Oh, send me the email, I'll email them. Yes. It didn't I tell you? What an anticipation. I feel like that was the um, secret room that you enter and then someone approaches you like, ooh, the videoing is not very good here. That was full to the second day. <laughs> I bust out my song, turn to the camera, I go, I feel like someone's gonna tell he's over my shoulder. Didn't <laughs> video email. I'm so gadgeted out. <laughs> I wish I didn't have gadgets so I could go somewhere and waste a whole bunch of money on gadgets again. <laughs> I swear, you get nothing to buy anymore. Everything, I've bought it three times over and got rid of it, or I still have it. Every single thing drones, cameras, pocket cameras, fucking gimbals, fucking consoles, custom done PCs, laptops, razors, like, there's just nothing left, bro. Musical instruments is the only thing that I've never got into. Never will. Apple products out of my ass, unfortunately. Hey, I'll tell you a funny story. The first time, so what, like last year, September last year, the, if he's following me for a while, you remember that me and my um, my wife, uh, it was the first time I ever went overseas and I'd done that European trip the first time, like three, four times ago. And um, the first time I ever went on a plane to went like a big airport overseas, I went to Dubai airport anyway, and I got off at Dubai airport and like I seen, see the Rolex clock? Um, the clocks, so the Rolex clock there, you know? And 
I got off and I was spinning the fuck out. I go, the boy's crazy. Brother, it, even in the airport, the clocks are all Rolexes, bro. Like, the boy's like fucking off its head. And then I just like slowly found out that every single international airport has Rolex clocks. I thought it was like this Dubai thing. <laughs> I've all got home telling my brother, bro, in Dubai, lad, they got like clocks in the airport and it's Rolex. And he's like, no way. <laughs> Luftwaffe. That's the business lounge. I go back in when we're done. Like, there's no point in me sleeping. It's gonna be ugly, bro. This is gonna be so ugly. Um, oh, these are the domestic flights. You remember I was saying? Look how many there is. Are they all like? Istanbul, Paris, Casa, you know, Barcelona, London. That's all the within uh, Europe flights. Compare it to the international. Uh, what was I gonna say? I'm gonna be fucked, bro. I'm gonna be fucked for a few days because look, this is the ugly thing. So today's a normal day, and I'm approaching 9 p.m., 10 p.m. when I jump on the plane, right? normal time to sleep perfect i got business class it's i got a bed like it, my seat goes out to a bed there's space i can sleep mad so i'll get on 10 i'll have their fucking feed and get cozy and whatever and then probably end up falling asleep and waking up all right and this is a 13 hour flight so i'll sleep for whatever i wake up i'll still be on the flight but the ugly thing is is that then I get to Singapore airport right so say I've already been to sleep and I've woke up so you just understand what jet lag is this is what it is like I said people don't understand what jet lag is people think jet lag is being tired from being on a holiday jet lag is being out of sync with sleeping hours to your new destination that's exactly what it is so you then have to sleep deprive or oversleep to reset it and it's actually hard so i'm gonna wake up after like six seven hours i'm gonna be awake on the plane it's my body clock 6 a.m right so say i went to sleep i woke up at 6 a.m i'll be on that plane for another listen how bad this is i'll tell you i cop this is the pinnacle of jet lag what i'm about to experience now I cop, um, so I wake up at 6 a.m. Let's just say if I sleep for six hours, if I took two hours before I went to sleep, that's eight hours, I'll wake up with five hours left on the flight. So in my body clock, right, I'm getting to Singapore airport at five hours past six. I'm getting there at 11 in the morning in my body clock. Forget the time where you are, that doesn't matter, right? This is jet lag. I'm at Singapore for three hours, right? Still fine, still working fine, uh, going fine. I only woke up five hours ago. So it's 11 a.m. body clock. Three hours later, I'm boarding the next flight. That's 2, a that's, uh, 2 p.m. then. So we've got to two o'clock in the Arvo. Body clock, I'm still feeling fine. Listen to this, right? Then Singapore to Sydney, keep in mind, it's about my 2 a.m., 2 p.m., I keep saying a.m. Uh, Singapore to Sydney is eight hours. That's fine, it's pretty long, not that long, right? So it's my body clock's 10 p.m. Do you get that? So I woke up at about 6 a.m., but that whole day, the remaining flight, the stopover, and then the eight hours, it's, it reached about 10 p.m. in my body clock. The time when I get to Sydney is 6.05 a.m. That's jet lag. That's, that's, you can't get any more jet lag than that. Right at the point where you're gonna go to sleep, it's then 6.05 a.m. in Sydney. What the fuck do you do? What do you do? So then you're dead. What do you stay awake? How do you stay awake? Well, you're like, I'm a junkie. Like, how am I going to stay awake past them from... So send it like at 10 a.m. Even if I was to stay awake, you, you can't, bro. Like, what am I going to make it half the day and then you crash? That's even worse. Because you're at 6 a.m. there say you make it to midday then you crash what do you wake up seven o'clock at night 
the best I'm trying to work out the logic of how to avoid this one the best thing I think for me to do is have when I get home at 6 a.m. well that's when the airport fucking airplane touches down by the time I get to my house it'll be 8 o'clock right it'll be 8 a.m. have a shower and then and then sleep straight away that's what I'm gonna have to do but not sleep for long maybe just enough to get me through to the night so I think like for three hours have a three hour sleep so that'll put me to 11 o'clock wake up and then just have a full horrible day and then that night time go back to sleep and then I would have reset my jet lag that's what that's how you have to calculate it to reset your jet lag so then if I can do that if I can achieve what I just said and then go to sleep that night after a horrible day just relax at home go to sleep that night have a full good sleep wake up the next morning like normal nothing ever happened it's just one bad day but if you fuck that up if you fall asleep for too long it goes on and on and on like say you went home and you slept at 8am and you slept as much as you wanted to and you woke up at like 4 in the arvo then mate it just continues then you're not sleeping till 6 o'clock tomorrow morning and it's just like you can't get out of it I don't know some people will live like that fucking hell I don't know brother not me cuz I go to sleep about 10 10 10 p.m. and I wake up at like 5 a.m. that's me that's my hours but anything out of that is horrible to me but I don't like it but yeah that's what I'm gonna have to do it should be sweet actually I think we just formatted it in my head I'm walking mindlessly down here hey, he's playing games lad they've all got snake issues lad oh. Gaming. That's Hector, slud. Hey, I got Xboxes set up. What are you talking about, cuz? Forzos. That's mad, lad. Many's over there, ain't on play. Oh, look how many they got. What are you talking about? Brother. Speak English, mate. I'm just gonna press that, bro. I don't know what it says there. Where am I gonna put this GoPro so you just can see? <laughs> Stellens. Ah, <laughs> oh, I pressed help. Bros, don't give me little uh, German swear words, mate. Something went wrong on all of them. What's he playing? Formula One, man. That's, that's full snuck a roulade, it's full drive, isn't it? But there's heaps. That's sick, eh? <laughs> Those heaps. I'm walking down like a long way to get down to a dead end. There's just gates down there, no shops, nothing. It's like eerie being in uh, such an empty airport, but it's cool, bro. Imagine being in a complete empty airport. That'd be sick. Little capsule, lad. I think I can charge the camera, lad. What are you talking about? Oh, the little capsule slide. Hey! <laughs> nice and cozy. I can leave his ear, brother. Put you on a little stand. That handle, I swear that's the handle I was talk I've been talking about, bro. I swear it is. 
But we'll have it when we get back. By the way, no one gave me a gym to train at. Two people responded. Someone says, like, Cogra or something. And someone said, Manly. What are you talking about, bro? I said around the Leichhardt area. I live in the city in the inner, inner west. Alright, what's with the sudden bangs? <laughs> I'll find a gym. I'll find a gym. Who asked you? What are you talking about, bro? Oh, it's connected, bro. You know how your phone remembers? When I was in Frankfurt last trip. You know, why did it connect to the Wi-Fi, brother? My thing's almost 400k. My Insta. I think if we just refresh, say 399. I think if we sat here refreshing it, we'd witness the point it changed to 400k. Maybe or maybe not. I can tell you the exact number. Nah, 618. 399-618. It's like another 380. That'll be like tomorrow morning. You see how crazy the thing? I'll show you a video, bro. You know how crazy the... The flats were in Belgrade? You know how I, put the, I posted this photo? On the on the thing, but I'll show you a little video. But shut up. Just get to the point, mate. You're counterproductive. Learn some. Huh? Yeah, come. Yeah, learn, mate. <laughs> learn. Look at this. I'll, show you, I'll zoom in. Look at that. Look how many flats there are, lad. That's where I've done a hood tour. That's not, that's what you're looking at is like maybe 30%, 40% of them. Not even 30%. Look at that, lad. Oh. I went to block 45 and block 62 in New Belgrade. How come you're up so early? How are the vlogs going, bro? The vlog channel that you are watching this on now is going all right, brother. So is the other channel. Who's going to lie about that? No, man, no, why, Kaz? Nearly 15k subs in like, what, a week? Not bad, bro. The views are going all right, too. The videos are getting like 40k, 30k. Hey, seen a freaky dude do do a little Rambo lad. What's my phone on? Thirty five percent. I don't want to see the end charger, bro. I'll go charge it somewhere else. I got a charge up. Maybe there's times in the day, maybe it's like busy in the morning, here, maybe all the international flights like they just smash them out in the morning because like why would there be like a big McDonald's and there's just so much that's closed, you know what I mean, it's got to be justified. There's a full massage place. Be relaxed, massage. Fuck, that'd be sick if that was open. 
How mad is that to kill an owl while waiting for your plane? An owl massage, full body, that's ouch. He's had enough. That was Matey that was playing that aim guy. That was him. He's had enough, bro. He's probably doing what I'm doing, lad. He's probably going some flight in like another four or five hours. He's just rolling around, eh? Playing games. <laughs> Sussing out the toilets. <laughs> Bahnhof. Bahnhof the Zwirtel. <laughs> Alright, Bahnhof must mean train. In that place I went, Bahnhof's Vertel. I'm starting to learn German, bruh. I think it means the main train station, Bahnhof's Vertel, lad. Oh, I'll tell you a little yarn, bruh. So, you know, I was in the Greek news. If you don't know, mate, follow my Instagram. I was in the Greek news, right? It's mad. National news. They love me. So I'm in the French news now, as of 16 hours from now. I'll show you it. They, they had to, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you. I'll show you, lad. They tried to fool, like, run me down in the French news. And all the French people like turned on them um, and they had to turn off, they, start, they deleted all their comments and then they had to turn off comments because people just keep saying. So what happened, you know how I went to yeah, Clichy Sous Bois yeah. and then like showed like how shit it is there. They done this thing, they must, they must be spewing bar like property investment and stuff, you know. And they done this like little piece on the Le Parisien. Le Parisi, it's a major news channel in France, like a big one. Even their their YouTube is like 1.6 million. And um, I'm on that YouTube channel. I don't know where else they put me, but they've done this piece. It's in French. Um, I'll get it up now. I'll get it up now. Le Parisien. This one. Uh, Clichy, there, there, see that one? Clichy vs Le Guerre Tourism. Clichy sous bois. Done YouTuber Australian. So look. It's good. Look. So they've got 1.3 million, sorry. Et nous, on a voulu savoir ce que pensaient les habitants d'une vidéo aussi négative sur leur quartier. Ah, c'est la merde. Que... Shut up. Fucking shit. Pas trop trop fun. Et comme vous pouvez le voir, il n'y a pas beaucoup de monde. Je crois qu'il y a beaucoup de monde. Il y a beaucoup de monde. Lui, c'est Spanien. Un YouTuber australien qui voyage beaucoup. Son truc, c'est de se promener dans les quartiers les plus défavorisés de la planète. Il y a seulement 7 commentaires. Il y a seulement 7 commentaires. Ils ont montré mon canal. Ils ont montré mon canal, bro. Donc, ce qu'ils ont essayé de dire, c'est que... Look at this stupid Australian YouTuber. He comes over here and tries to say like Paris is a ghetto and blah 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 and 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 then everybody and then they 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 um they interview like locals from there, right? And there's this thing in Paris that like France is that it's well most of Western Europe is that it's like mutually agreed by all the people that when they let in all the refugees and Africans and people from the Middle East that their countries went shit. So that's just a full universal West European um, view that they have, right? And so because Le Paris, Le, Le Parisian News, so what they've done is they try to say, look, he's trying to say our country's shit. And then they went and interviewed those exact people, like all Africans and stuff like that. So. The whole fucking comment section was full of French people like, the Australian is right. Our country is rubbish. You've let it go to rubbish. And now you're interviewing people who are the cause of it. You're not even interviewing because it's like heaps of like 
racism in Western Europe now because of that shit. Same as like Sweden and fucking Spain and everywhere. And so it made it even worse that the fact that there were people that were even asking were the people that it's viewed as made it like that. So then the whole comment section turned into this big racist like um, argument. (laughs) And there was just like the whole people were like, why are you trying to say to the channel why are you trying to say that he's lying about france the whole france is ghetto france is full of ghettos he's not lying he's telling the truth he's just documenting what he saw so it full backfired on them their piece is trying to run me there i'm like i went to france and france is a good place but i i try to like do something shifty like like i lie to you and sh- bro it is what it is i don't give a fuck I don't care if Francie's ghetto or if it's clean. I just cruise around filming fucking hoods. Do you know what I mean? But they got like, France got all, the French news got all defensive about it. And um, yeah, tried to like turn it on me. So then they, they're interviewing um, like locals. So if you've seen all those like African lads getting interviewed and they're like, they got them to say, nah, nah, this place is beautiful. It's not ghetto. But it's fucking ghetto as fuck, lad. Like, <laughs> these places in Paris are like some of the most ghetto places I've been. It's probably not as bad as Naples, but the, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's there. Yeah, it backfired on them, so they had to delete all the comments. And then the comments started again. <laughs> and then um, they just turned the comments off, and they just kept seven. And the seven they kept uh, are still like for me. Um, they'll probably end up deleting the video. If you write that channel in, Le Parisien, whatever, Clichy Soubois. Um, Australian YouTuber, it'd be hard to search, but it'll come up and you'll see it. I can almost guarantee that they'll end up like deleting the video because it how much it backfired on them. Gronk say. Eh? Like why are you trying to turn it on me, lad? You've you fucking there's a hood, there's a hood, who cares? We got hoods in Sydney. So what bro? He's so defensive about true? Like who cares, bro? It's like if I film in Sydney in Mount Druid or Campbelltown or Attention. wherever. And then the Australian gut news is like, oh, look at this liar. But relax, bro. I'm walking around filming. I didn't even say anything. It's like a bougie, it's Italian food, but I can't eat that, the diet doesn't uh, suffice this Italian food, mate. You know what I hope? I hope they try and interview me. I hope they do. Even one of my managers, James, said that. He goes, bro, like, they'll probably want to interview you and they'll try roast you. They'll try and like put you on a liar on like, live TV. Bro, they got a DJ set here. He goes, I love if they've done that. They'll be talking their French. Uh, on YouTube, why did you come to Paris and make a lies about us? And I'll be, mate, what are you talking about, lad? You're talking full shit, bro. I went to clear shit, brother. I was full hood, lad. You'll chat, bro. There was a human shit on the floor, brother. Relax. The windows were burnt out. And I'll be like, but you only went to the bad parts. Of course I did. That's what the fucking show is. It's like if you do a food show, you only go to the food parts. Fucking no, brother. It's the show. You stop being so defensive, Paris, brother. No one cares, brother. Have a cry. You know what I feel? I feel like... Um, I feel like I make people... Like people, I don't know. When I'm walking around talking on this, I feel like people get secondhand embarrassment. I don't know why, lad. It's like they get shamed out walking next to me. Like I look at people next to me and they're like, doing the shame face. I just do live your life. I gotta get my boarding pass out to get back into this place. Oh 
I'll get my little the Bosserus out. <laughs> Hugos Bosseros. <laughs> My name is Hugo. Hugo Bosserus. Rhinoceros. Alright, here we go. I've got too many ag bays, lad. Too my head in. I've got a fucking back bag, a front bag, a ball bag. Brother, relax. The skin again? No? Alright, thank you. Hello. I'll get a coffee. It's even more empty than before, lad. Coffee machine's not busy. We'll get a chair down that back here, bro. Cause that coffee machine up the up there where the food is is broken. Pretty sure that's a long black, but everywhere you go, a black coffee has a different name because sometimes it's cafe long and then that's understandable. Most of the time it's Americano. This this time it's cafe creme coffee. Oh, is this black? It's not black. Of course it's not black. I'm dumping it here. What's that bro? Which one's the long black? Oh, I think it's kind of. Nah, that's not a black coffee. Get the fuck out of here, bro. I'm not settling, lad. Which one's a black coffee then? Espresso. Espresso is putrid, lad. Espresso is like a long black without the water in it. It's like a little pile of mud. It's chat, lad. I'm just drinking this, bro. I don't know what it is. It's only a little bit of milk, bro. It's not gonna hurt. Oh, bro, that's a long black. I think all the foam is remnants from the the old coffee. Get off. This is what it is, lad. This is what happens between every shoot. So I just flew to Porto. Bro, I haven't even told you what happened in Porto, eh? Lad. 
You know what, brother? I couldn't even be bothered getting into it. I couldn't even be bothered getting into it. That's why I don't... <laughs> I don't want to get into it. This is why I don't organise uh, guides. Like, I'll get... Well, if I could get proper guides, I will, cause, but, like... First of all, I don't like it. I'd just rather be by myself. But I understand sometimes you have to. There's going to be plenty of times that I have to. Oh, my phone's charging. Um, anyway, Porto, would I have had to? Probably not, lad. Probably not, lad. <laughs> right? It's Porto. It's not like Marseille or fucking Chicago or London or fucking something, you know, where it's full red hot. It's, it's Porto. It's red hot, but it's not. This bloke goes, I'm talking to this bloke. It was like the, it's, this, it's two from two. It's like when I went to Bucharest and done Ferentari. I'm talking, this bloke messaged me, I can take you through the hood in thing, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, he's messaging me on Australia. I said, I'm coming to Europe, I'll chuck you on the trip then, I'll come back to Porto. I had no reason to ever go back there, bro. Come back to Porto, lad. He's going, yeah, he's, he's old. He puts his Instagram photos of him in the hood, blah, 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 blah. So I go to Porto because of this bloke. He goes, yeah, this hood here, I can show you everything. My dad runs the hood. Um, he's an OG here. I grew up here. I've been in jail a couple of times, but I just try to stick my nose clean. But me and the boys are sweet. You'll be able to talk to the boys and I'll all cover their face and I'll tell you all the cool crime stories. That cliche shit that fucking everyone wants to hear, bro. And I'm going, all right, bro, sweet. Like, we'll do an episode like that. I'd be mad. So if it was just up to me... If I knew what was going to happen, I would have just went like every other episode, told no one, walk through the hood, you know, just be inconspicuous, be quiet, not harass anyone, not go up and knock on doors and stick my camera in people's faces, walked around, experienced what a normal person would experience without trying to be Tom Cruise or fucking George Clooney and left and had a good episode and would have been mad. We all would have learned the insides of that thing, what it looks like and, you know, we're doing good, but nah, I'll get a guide. So I rock up to this hood, lad. He goes, yeah, I'll meet you there, blah, blah, blah. And I could tell after four, four or five weeks of talking since I got back from last European trip, he was like so, he's like, so. but on the day, he was like, I go, all right, I'm going, like, I'm leaving the thing now. I'm leaving the motel now, catching a the tram there. And I'll get there, and he goes, oh, he goes, oh, look, fucking, my daughter's sick. He goes, you'll probably get there before me. You'll probably be finished the walk around by the time I get there. And I thought, and I said, oh, why would I do that? Why wouldn't I just wait for you? I've flown from Australia to fucking Porto. Why would I rush the shoot because you're 40 minutes late? He goes, oh, sweet, so yeah, just wait for me, man. Just wait for me. I go, All right, I waited for him. I message him again on Insta. Listen to this, cuz. I message him again on Insta. And he goes, yeah, sweet. I'm, he goes, where are you? I showed him a picture. Like, I'm at the bottom. I'm going to go into where I wouldn't usually enter from. The lads are there selling drugs. There's Unky J's, this and that, you know? I wouldn't enter from there. I, wouldn't, I, don't want, I don't even want to record those people's faces. You know what I mean? I'm not a police officer. I show a, into the hood a learning experience from an average person POV. That's what it is. Not a private investigator. I don't want to hear their dark stories. I don't want to capture them on film doing crime. That's not what the show is. But he's saying, yeah, he goes, so you're at the bottom. He goes, oh, I'm at the top, bro. He goes, yeah, just walk in. If you see the boys, like, just walk in. Um, it'll be sweet. So I'll meet you in the middle. And so I just walk in with the camera. These cunts look at me, right? Like, I haven't even started filming yet. These cunts look at me and they're like, they're being polite at least. And they go, oh, brother, and I said in our English, English, he goes, brother, like, what are you doing? You can't film here. He goes, this, this is, he told, he goes, this is like, the people here, they will freak out. These people are all drug trafficking, drug trafficking. And I go, no, no, it's sweet, listen to this. I go, no, no, it's sweet, I'm here to meet Vico, Vasco, whatever his fucking name was, Portuguese name. I go, no, no, it's sweet, lad. I'm here to meet the one of the lads. His dad runs this place. 
And they're going, you're meeting someone here? They told you to film here? So I'm talking to the boys now. The boys are called over other boys. I'm talking to four lads, but they're mad, like, you know what I mean? One was just full fascinated that I was from Australia. He asked me where I was from. I'm cutting out the small talk. He kept, like, fist bumping me, Sydney. He goes, oh, he's very good, buying like that, you know? <laughs> and, um... So, and, and they go, like, all right, like, who's the lad? And I go, bro, like... And mind you, like, like I'm not filming this. They say they're freaking out. Like, as soon as they seen that I had a camera in my hand was about to film, they're like, no, no, no. So I'm not filming this. I'm talking about what's about to happen. Like, I'm going to start filming. We're just going to walk around here, this and that. And they're freaking, like, that I'm going to point the camera at them. I don't know if some of them have got warrants, this and that. Anyway, I'll get to the point. Um, I'll get to the fucking point. He goes, um... Show who's the bloke you're coming to meet. Re remember, this bloke told me that his dad runs the hood, he's in the hood every day. You know, like, so I followed him, and every day he's posting little pictures of the hood and articles. But the, the bloke was playing the biggest game the whole time. No one had ever seen his face. I'm showing the Instagram. I go, nah, this lad. And they're like, no one ever seen him, heard of him, knows who his dad is. I go, listen, I go, no, no, don't worry about it. I'll sort it out, bro. I go, it's all, right, it's all good, boys. It's all good. So I left, right? So I walk down the street and they're like, nah, all good, brother. Sorry, bro. But if you go up here, you can't film like this and that. Like everyone's now, everyone's looking at me. So the core of the hood, the, the part that you don't want people to see you filming, I've gone up like i was ready for a hollywood shoot you know like oh boys i'm coming for this shoot so now every single possible person in the hood knows what i'm there to do there's no turning back i can't then go and do a u-turn change my shirt and then sneak around the hood i go bro i'll go turn a i walk down the street anyway there's a servo i message the bloke i go bro where where are you i just seen the boys the lads there they freaked out on the camera and um they told me there's no you can't film here and um they said they don't know who you are he opens the message after that he opens the message this is the best yarn he opens the message it just stays on scene like he usually responds quick about three minutes later i reply again i go brother like how far are you weren't you on one street away he goes he sends a message oh fuck you'll never believe what happened i go what happened he goes the police they seen me man straight away i'm, I'm not dumb i've been from the streets or in jail the verbals are getting chucked now i know what's going on the police seen me man i go all right three minutes later no response i go so are you sweet now the police seen you okay what are you fugitive all of a sudden he goes man they banned me from the hood like i have this condition three years i'm not allowed in the hood brother they they busted me man like if i walk to where you are literally if i literally walk to where you are i go jail for three years bro they made me turn around they're following me man i don't know what to do bro and i got fuck i just wrote fuck me dead he goes, bro, like, I'm so sorry about this. Bro, this bloke the whole time, no one knows him. I don't know, bro, the whole thing was all like us. I think he was hoping that he could sneak. This is honestly what I think. He was going to walk around with me, hoping that nobody was around had me thinking that he's somebody in the hood and his dad runs it and would walk around with me and see if he could get away with a shoot and i would have filmed it and walked away and posted it and the whole time no one would have ever known and he's now the kingpin of some hood that people don't even know him in do you get what i'm trying to say that's why the day before the, the hour before he was like trying to back out of it slowly like oh you just go there before me i'm a bit late and i'll get there at the end of the shoot i'm thinking in my head why would i do that i came to this place because you said you're going to take me in why would i just go in and then just say hi to you after it 
And so that was weird. And then as soon as I said, I seen the boys, they said they don't recognize you. Oh man, the police, bro. I've got a band from this area. What do you mean, bro? Your whole Instagram was full of this. And next minute, his whole Instagram, the pictures were deleted. That was what happened to the hood in Porto. This is the issue you face. You know how you just you just chuck verbals. People just chuck verbals out. Oh, just go and meet people there. What are we talking about? Like what? What reality are you from? Just go and meet people. Like there's only two ways about it, really. I literally pull my camera out to random criminals in the middle of criminal activities in their street and walk up and say, "Hey, bro, I'm from YouTube. What are you doing here?" This is what people, viewers, actually think that people, this is like a real thing. This is their suggestions. That's not a thing. I don't know where you've grown up and what type of life you've led. That's not a thing, right? No way is it a thing. Not even in a safe place is that a thing, all right? And the only other option is talking to random people from the internet there's what way do i have to verify it there's literally people out there that will fake an entire instagram page this bloke was walking by the hood i think he was sneaking around the hood on the daily putting stories up of him in front of a flats and to try to like show the whole time he was an outsider so if such an elaborate plan he had a full story everything such an elaborate plan it can't be trusted what am i gonna do cuz like hey you know what i mean like people just chuck it out there just get a guide sure sure bro i'll ring up guides are us and i'll check the google reviews before i fly to the other side of the world and meet them plus it's dangerous you, you gotta understand this in a lot of circumstances doing that is more dangerous do you understand like i'm giving you inside information that it's that it's more dangerous like it's one thing for me to walk in a dangerous area like a lost tourist how i do i'm getting around whoa fuck, this is crazy i see some people they look sketchy try to avoid them look in the flats like that's one thing if people say what are you doing oh i'm i'm lost tourist or i graffiti or i'm looking for food and then it's all right bro like they'll rob you or they'll just tell you to get the fuck out or someone will say delete your video there's another level of danger when you're alerting people hey i'm this famous youtuber from australia um please look at my instagram and th my youtube and i'm gonna come on this exact date at this exact time a month and a half from now that's not a safe thing to do yeah, you get what I mean? You just have a bunch of lads there just like, what? Who? Has he got money? Let's look on his Instagram page. Oh, look at his car. Look at his watch. Oh, he flies around the world. Oh, he gets those views. Yeah, tell him to come on June the 9th. We'll be waiting for him. Will he be nice and safe? Trust me, lad. Giving people heads up, it's, it can go just as bad as it can be good don't get me wrong if somehow you can get like a, a person that's like verified and like but how do you even do that i don't know brother anyway that's the yarn and these are the, the same thing happened in um ferentari in uh the, in, in budapest in bucharest romania brother this bloke i spoke to him for like four weeks yeah come come i'll take you around the day of the shoe, he doesn't answer me. But at least with him, he just didn't answer. So I still got to do the shoot because then I just treated it like I had to sneak around. So I still got to do it. With the fucking Portuguese one, the one in Porto, the bloke was lying saying, yeah, just walk in, walk to the boys, I'll be there. He made me, <laughs> he made me red light myself. So I was like, bro. Like, I think it's doable. If I just do it my way and then just do it smart, like don't walk in with your camera showing, walk in and then pull your camera out or walk in from a different side. 
I just walked in like fucking the front door, cameras flexing and everything. They were spinning out. They're like, what the fuck's this? Who's this bloke walking into the front of our flats with a camera? Out of my hand, big smile, walking up, confident. <laughs> it was annoying, bro. So that's why out of the Porto, the only um, episode was the McDonald's. Because I went there to do two shoots and one of them was didn't happen. So, yeah. Anyway. It was a mad trip. Other than that, the rest of the trip was mad. The rest of the trip was mad. Probably the worst, honestly, like, probably the worst hood I went was probably Bulgaria, in Sofia, Bulgaria. You should wait for that episode. Blood. You know, like, when I went to Sofia, Bulgaria, that was a proper reality check as an Australian. Is it the first time, like everything, you get slightly desensitized, everything was more and more of a reality check as I, you know, like you get desensitized to it, you know what I mean? But Sofia, Bulgaria was a whole nother level. Like, unbelievable. It was a whole nother level, bruh. The way that people were living there, especially in this one specific part, it was like, I thought to myself in my head, I thought, fuck, there are so many Australians. It, bro, honestly, probably even Americans, definitely like Australians and people from New Zealand. Like, there's so many of us that need to see that shit and they just be like, bro, what, what? How are you here? Like, how, how did this happen to your suburb? It's fucking mental. The first time I, f I thought that was the first time I got like a big, I'm trying to remember the order in which I'd done hood tours. Obviously an Australian one's not gonna make me think that or like a New Zealand one or something. Um, Kushi Subwa, nah, it was, it was ghetto, just dirty towers, it wasn't that bad. Um, Barcelona, the first, El Reveal, definitely not. La Mina, which comes out tomorrow, probably by the time you see this, it'll already be out, was pretty bad, but not like a reality check, you know what I mean? Um, the first time was probably uh, Scampia in Naples. The first, that would probably be the first time, Scampia in Naples. When I got off at Scampia Station, Bro, it was fucking scary, bro. Like, it, the whole suburb was scary, lad. The people were scary. Like, the buildings were scary. The place was hammered. It was, the, the projects that I went to, I was like, what is this? What is this? It's worse than a movie set. But, Bulgaria, I'm not saying it's more dangerous than Scampion. I'm just saying in terms of like, visually like, what? It's bright, it's unbelievable. Double Scampia, double, double lad. I'm sure I will get that realization. Well, not realization, but that, that feeling and, and that, that um, outlook when I approach somewhere multiple more times to come. <sighs> anyway, bah, that's the yarn, lad. Got nothing else to show you. I'm here for another six o'clock now. We leave, take off in like four hours. I'm gonna fucking go up there. Get another feed soon, drink some water, pump a itchai, <laughs> pump a itchai, have a shower. You can have showers here. They got towels there, business lounges. That's it, bruh. Jump on my plane and come home. Laters. See you later, bruh.